We did not see any emotion from your client in court. Is he in any way remorseful about what happened? He definitely is. We have to all remember uh, he is a 16-year-old boy, so a very scary situation today uh, to be in front of a number of cameras, hear the clicking, um, and to be appearing in front of a judge. What is it about what is the, the changing in the today? plea? <clears throat> Pardon me? Why did you change the plea? Uh, originally, we filed a notice of insanity, uh, and based on the conversations that we've had and the review of the discovery, uh, we felt it appropriate to withdraw that and have him plead guilty today. Is that because of the challenge that you were facing with trying to go up against an insanity plea? Uh, obviously it's difficult, but we did that because we wanted to explore every single possibility and every single option to make sure that we were doing the right thing. As his attorney, what do you have to say to the families that are here that just watched this? Obviously it is an extremely emotional day. There are, I don't think there are no, any words that could um, make them feel any better. Should he what about the life decision in behind uh, talking about the gun? Because how is this going to impact his parents' case, and do you anticipate he's going to testify in their case? I don't want to talk as to the parents' case. He has two very qualified attorneys, um, and I don't want to muddy any of the water there. What about the life in prison? Should he spend life in prison? Uh, that's a decision that the court will have to make. Obviously, I've gotten to know Mr. Crumbly, um, and I think through the Miller hearing, the court will and the public will as well, and that's a decision the judge will have to make. What do you plan to seek for sentencing at this point? Um, well, we would absolutely love a term of years, um, but that's based on a number of factors, and that's something that the court will have to decide. Can you go through the process of what happens next? Uh, there's been changes in the juvenile life. Sure. So the laws are continuously changing, changing currently. Um, so at this point, most likely there will be a Miller hearing um, where each side presents factors for the court to consider before uh, handing down a sentence. Why do you feel your client should serve less than life without parole? Uh, there's a number of factors. I think those will be made um, evident at the Miller hearing. Um, so that's all I'll say on that. He well, talked specifically about the terrorism charge, and he said, yes, he meant to terrorize. He, has he ever said that to you? Um, obviously, that's under attorney-client privilege, so I'm not able to answer that. I apologize. Do you expect that he will testify at the Miller hearing? Uh, that is still a question. We don't have a decision on that yet. Do you anticipate he's going to testify in his parents' case? Um, obviously, if he's called as a witness, that's something that may play out. Um, I'm, I'm unsure at this point. Has he had any contact with his parents? He has not. There's a no contact order. Why did he want to plead guilty? Um, well, he's taking accountability for his actions. Since he is pleading guilty now, and he is will then go to the Department of Corrections versus not guilty by reason of insanity, will he get help for mental issues as time goes on? Uh, the Michigan Department of Corrections does have counseling. Obviously, it's not as in-depth as it would be if he was housed in a mental health facility, but yes, that's our hope. Any counseling at this point or just working on his GED? Uh, he receives minimal counseling at the jail. Does he talk about what happened? Um, yes. Did you discourage him from taking this plea? Um, again, any conversations between us are obviously covered by attorney and client privilege, but I think he made the right decision today. Did he know the students that he was shooting? Did he target them, or was it random? He did not know them. So there was no discussion related to him testifying in his parents' case? Um, there's been discussion. Obviously, I don't know if they've placed him on a witness list that they filed or not. Um, so I think that is still kind of evolving. Can you talk about the remorse? You say he's feeling remorseful. Can you elaborate on that? Um, I think that'll be evident during the Miller hearing. Um, I think that will come across very clearly. Does he miss his parents? Does he talk about them at all? Um, again, I, I can't tell him tell you what he's telling me, but obviously, again, he went into jail as a 15-year-old and has had limited to no family contact. So, if he had been segregated. Is he now in the like? How what's his, what's his life like right now in jail? Uh, so he is completely segregated. He doesn't have contact with anyone except for deputies and his attorneys. What kind of technology access does he have? Um, he's using a tablet, um, but he's only messaging his attorneys. It's, he doesn't have free reign of the internet. For advice and counsel on this, he had you as an attorney, guardian ad litem, but I heard another attorney possibly? Uh, yes, Ms. Hopp, who was at the table with me, um, she has assisted me and assisted Ethan as well. And one guardian ad litem. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you.